Last year's Galaxy A70 turned out to be a pretty nice smartphone with decent specs for quite an adequate amount of money, in Samsung understanding of course. After a rush to update their most successful models from Galaxy A series, Korean's giant is offering A71, a new hit with supposedly higher benefits, at least they think so. So today you will find out what is A71 itself and I will help you to understand whether it's worth buying that phone. My name is Bogdan, welcome to tech fellas. The outer look first, and it won't be a catch for people who didn't buy A70 last year because of the plastic bag. The new gen didn't solve the problem, its body is a whole polymer except for glass on the front panel. I completely understand why people are so mean to Samsung because of that. Take a look, device itself could easily be posing at some catwalk. Oh, these witty patterns on the back, shimmering overflows, a large screen with not the smallest but adequate frames. It is meeting us with an awesome card drawer. Headphone jack is in place together with Type-C port. Well, how couldn't this be nice? And now you realize that all that beauty is made from the same glossy plastic. You know, considering that for the most of the time I would wear it in a case, I might forgive Samsung for that. What about you? Please, share in comments. And also subscribe, it's nearly 1000 on the channel. That would be awesome. What else? There's the built-in to the screen fingerprint reader that works stable, but not quickly enough as by the standards of the whole market. However, in terms of Galaxy A line, it is somewhere as everyone else has. Face recognition through the front camera can be described in the same words. It is stable, but even inexpensive Chinese phones deal with this semi-biometric stuff quicker than our Korean guy. Device is nicely built, the only thing is, in a hand it feels like a shovel, simply because it has sizes kinda like a mini shovel. You can visually see how big a 71 is comparing with iPhone XR, for instance, which is also far from being the most compact smartphone in the world. The glass that I mentioned before has a layer for be coating. It covers 60.7 inch screen made by Super AMOLED Plus technology and has 2400 by 1080 resolution. The pixel density is frankly satisfying, we haven't seen any separate eye eating points here. The viewing angles as well as brightness range are adequate. Too. As for the sensor, the response speed is quick and correctly deals with every touch. In general, the screen is quite good. Not yet finished with this, it is certainly worth noting that PWM is suddenly just intangible here. My eyes don't see it in principle, but our camera, which has always been more than sensitive to it, noticed something only at the lowest brightness values. Looks like this demon is working here by default. The last but not the least, A71 screen includes always on display options. Traditionally for Samsung it has so many settings to modify what you see on the screen when locking the phone, that even the most eager customization lovers will be lost in this menu for a bit. Next goes cameras, and I'd like to start with the front facing one. On the photos you can see that quality here is not bad at all, both the white balance and sharpness are decent and you even have the possibility of switching to an ultra wide angle mode, so that not only you, but also some of your bulky friends fit in the frame. The video that you see now is in 4 4K, but without any stabilization. Despite the latter fact, the clips come out pretty much ok in regards to the quality of the sound through microphone and the picture itself. As for the photos from the main camera, at least I don't wanna say anything bad, dynamic range is quite good as for the middle class, the phone draws pleasant colors and in general the picture looks cheerful and I'd even say there is no need in post-processing or editing apps. Shooting can be made on a wide angle and on a super wide one. The macro lens is also here, but I frankly don't find it useful. The same feelings I have for portraits, and at least I can say that smartphone shoots them well. When taking video, the maximum resolution is 4K, and commonly for Samsung, the quality of such clips is more likely to make you happy rather than not. The only thing that keeps bothering me is the lack of stabilization when shooting in 4K. Here's an example for you, a video captured on A71 in 4K without stabilization. After activating it in settings, the picture became smoother, but the image itself has lost much in details. Nothing actually strange, cause resolution switched to 1080p automatically. If you are an audiophile and will decide to plug some earphones and turn the favorite song, you will realize that the phone is not an alternative to any worthy hi-fi player, because it sounds somewhere like any Android smartphone for a similar budget. It is also far behind to be called a portable speaker, as A71 hasn't got a stereo player, the only singing 
second speaker here is the multimedia one. It tries really hard to impress you with the sound and volume, but you won't call it the best in the world. Here comes the hardware. Despite the fact that this guy is from Samsung that manufactures their own processors, a chipset from Qualcomm is installed here, more specifically Snapdragon 730. As for the graphics, it is Adreno 618. The memory set in this A71 consists of 6 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. I can say with confidence the smartphone is snappy in daily tasks. A chipset easily covers the smoothness in the interface in apps from Play Market, including the same Play Market, all messengers and simple software. You will also embrace good feelings while gaming on this device. Absolutely any game here we ran at maximum graphic settings and didn't face drawdowns in FPS after half an hour or even an hour. For example, our longest session in World of Tanks Blitz here lasted about an hour. What can you imagine? The smartphone didn't boil and continued to strike with about 45-60 FPS, which is just great performance results. To end up speaking about hardware, I can safely say that NFC is in place. Cheers up! Now let me show you what we've got after testing a battery life. The capacity is hefty 4500 mAh. In daily and more common conditions of use, the phone lasts in average one day and a half. If you charge it from the adapter out of the box, in 15 minutes you will get to 26% of the battery, in 30 minutes 47%, for an hour 86% and the full charge will meet you in 1 hour and 20 minutes. Summarizing the stuff, Galaxy A71 cannot be called a smartphone that has no alternative on the market, but in defense, A71 offers a bunch of bold specs. It has a nice card drawer, a good screen and an FC, mini jack saved its place, as well as quite adequate cameras and an excellent level of performance. As we figured out a few moments later, its battery life is not a shame, many will say that the phone is too expensive as for the middle class, while people who have been using Samsung smartphones for many years are in tranquility with its pricing policy and clearly understand that Koreans could set much higher price tag for such level of products. In other words, fans of Samsung should be really happy about that smartphone existence. If you're one of them and ready to spare some additional bucks, you must have no doubts in buying it, even with Xiaomi and some other Chinese brands crawling around and still being a top for the money they want for their stuff. A71 turned out to be a nice ancestor of the last year's smartphone. In the end, I can even call it a 70 but on the maximum settings. So this is it for today and I will leave a couple of links to internet stores for buying that guy in the description box below. And if you like this video then why not to support our channel by subscribing to it, hitting the like button, ringing the bell to stay tuned for more cool content. My thanks for watching and cheers!